All right, ladies and gentlemen, it is time to go. Our 34 hour restart is officially completed. And it's time to go. Kind of foggy out here this morning. <sighs> so, what are we going to talk about in this video, man? Listen, I like that it's piquing people's interest when it comes to power only. Because power only has a lot of subcategories within it. It's not just, you know, a straight PO like some somebody like Amazon or JV Hunt or anything like that, you know? Okay, so we made it in Texas. This trailer pulls actually pretty good. It's showing on the gauge, it's showing a steady 9.5 on fuel. I don't think that's accurate though. Because like pulling 9.5, I mean, it's a small trailer, right? So it doesn't have a lot of drag. So maybe it's accurate, we will see. Um, I'm gonna fill it up. I wish I had filled it up before I left Atlanta. I was like short by 10 gallons, I think. Maybe 20 gallons, we will see. So we grab a total of 111 gallons. So let's just say I grab, or I was missing just 15 gallons, right? And then we use six gallons in APU. When you divide 90 into 723, we're looking at a little slightly over eight miles to the gallon. It's a little weird in my opinion because of the fact that it's showing on the dash. I'm gonna show it to you. It's showing 994. <laughs> there it is, 94. Now, when I first got this truck, I drove it bobtail, I would say, it's pretty accurate on what it shows on the dash, okay? Because I did put pen to paper and calculated it. This weekend, while doing my research or reset, I did put pen to paper, you know, and calculated the MPG, and she's averaging seven, seven two, almost seven, close to seven, you know, let's just say seven one, okay? And the dash, actually on the dash, between the dash, the information on the dash throughout the whole thing between empty, bobtail and all of that, it was actually showing 8.6. So it's a little weird. I think, it's, I thought it was a little weird uh, that, you know, it seemed like it's using more or it's not accurate when it's on the, it's not accurate on the dash when you're, loaded you know so for some reason that's a little weird okay so we are in houston texas we are in the thick of it we're heading towards san antonio we're not quite going all the way to san antonio but that's where we're delivering this little short trailer on the east side of san antonio so, power only. Let's talk about it. So first let me give you a quick definition of what a power only is. Or commonly referred to as PO. Power only basically referred to as a you providing the tractor and somebody else is providing the trailer. Now there's variations of power only. There's power only where it's just, just straight power only. That means you take your tractor, you drive to the location, you pick up the trailer, you hook to it and drop it to point B. There's also a variation of power only, which is called 
loadout trailer. What that essentially means is that a lot, there's, there's trailers everywhere, right, throughout the country, and there's trailers that need to be moved throughout the country, okay? And these trailers, usually, they want them moved for a discount, so they don't want to pay the full rate, you know, for that particular lane to move that trailer. So what they do is they put it on a loadout, right? So you can go get it, pick it up at a discounted rate, take it from point A to point B, and during a certain period of time frame, you as the carrier can use that trailer to put loads on it. And you keep all the profit. You don't split the profit with anybody or nothing like that. You keep all of it. If you haven't seen some of my power only load loadout videos, I'm going to link them up. I've made videos before, but it seems like there's a lot more people with questions about power only and loadout trailers and whatnot. See, I, I get it. You know, it's a big industry. You got people coming in, you got people coming out all the time, right? Throughout the whole year. So you, you got people that have questions, you know, that never heard of such a term, right? So that's why we're making this video. That's why we're talking about it right now. First, let's discuss some of the differences between a dedicated power only load compared to a power only loadout trailer. A power only load is something that would be like say Amazon, right? You go to Amazon, you pick up their trailer and, do, and things like that. They uh, coordinate everything for you. In a power only mode, also the, either the broker or the shipper will cover cost of such as breakdown and things like that on that particular trailer. Not all of them do. You got to read your contract. You got to read your contract, okay? Uh, most of your loadout trailers, okay, power only loadout trailers, they don't cover none of that. You have to keep that in mind. That's why when I made the videos about power only, five tips about power only, I'm going to link it right here, is that I talk about some of those points. curious myself the actual length of this freaking trailer I she told me over there I just forgot when I picked up the trailer but I think when it says uh, model number FC 34 I think that means it's a 34 foot trailer even though it's only a 34 foot trailer look at that 80,000 pound gross vehicle weight rating that's insane like this thing is built is built like a beast this thing is like like it feels heavy as a matter of fact it feels heavier than that last uh than the other trailer i had but then again that was an aluminum trailer okay so let's talk about power only the advantages of just a straight power only load like this one right here this is a power only load okay this is not a loadout trailer. This is a power only load, which means I cannot put anything on this trailer, okay? But this also means that like if there was something happen along the way with this trailer whatsoever, whatever that is, they they're going to go we call the broker and then they're going to go ahead and cover that whatever that cost whatever the cost is to repair this trailer, okay? Now when you're in a loadout trailer that's a little bit of a different story there's some that would cover there's some broker that brokers that would cover the cost of a breakdown but majority of them would not that's why you have to make sure you inspect that trailer you inspect that trailer from the front all the way around all the way underneath all the way to the top and make sure that you want to bring that trailer you know First thing I look for is on um, on a loadout trailer is does it have a DO active uh, DOT inspection? Like I mean, is it DOT ready? You know, w when they do the annual inspection or whatever. If 
it has that, then I am confident that it's probably going to be good, but I'm still going to go check the trailer all the way around. Make sure I want to take that trailer. Make sure it is DOT road ready. Now let's take a look at the load board and take a quick gander what a loadout trailer looks like on a load board. First thing you want to do is when you do your search, right? Uh, you want to go ahead and do your little searches. You, you know what I found here lately is that 200 miles of search area is actually pretty good when it comes to power only. I know, I know, there's a lot of deadhead miles. So you see, last video, if you haven't seen that already, I'm going to link it. But last video, we talk about 234 a mile on average for 2,800 miles, but there was like over a thousand miles of that was either deadhead or bobtail. And all of those miles are paid at an average of 234 a mile. So, I mean, you know what I mean? That's pretty good. So when you do your search, right, you go, you put your point of origin, you put your how many miles you deadheading, you put destination, whatever, right? And when you put the type, the type of truck type, you, you don't want to go to all because when you go to all, you're not filtering all of it when, when you're searching, okay? Just take a look. You, you will find box trucks unless, I guess, unless you want to find box trucks load, okay? Uh, over here in this category, you will see box truck just like that right there, straight box truck right there, 5,000 pounds at $1,500.46 a mile, okay? Uh, so what we need to do is we need to get out of there and go back to power or only the only side right here from all to only and then you want to put that on po power only just like that and you do the rest of the uh, stuff that you got to do fill out in there or if you're satisfied with the way it is you put the search load remember it's sunday it's sunday evening tomorrow this could look very very different okay there's 19 loads showing right now but i just wanted to show you a quick show you on how i spot loadout trailers okay so loadout trailer to this right here by uh coyote logistics this is a straight power only load that's what it looks like so on the weight part that's what that's how i identify between a loadout trailer and a power only trailer okay so the weight usually usually the brokers would put on there except for tql <laughs> I'm going to tell you a story about TQL in a second. Okay. But anyway, um, so the weight part, that's where they're going to input uh, brokers. If it's a PO, it's, it's just, if it's a power only where you just got a hook, it's already loaded, you got a hook, and then just take it to point B, usually they would put the weight on there. Okay. When it's a loadout trailer, it would look something like this one right there. That's a loadout trailer. I, how? Because I knew how I know because I knew the ten thousand pounds. As a matter of fact, that's a nice loadout trailer. It's a flatbed trailer, forty-eight foot. We might actually take that Paris, Texas. I don't know where Paris, Texas is, but yeah. Anyway, uh, that's how I identify between the power only load or a power only loadout trailer. Anyway, we're here. We're twenty-two miles away. We actually got a look. We caught a shorty with Amazon. See, I'm telling you, man, we hustle, man, we hustle. Oh, before, just right before I end this vlog, okay, let me tell you a quick story about <laughs> TQL. So TQL had a power-only trailer coming out of Alabama when we were in Atlanta, okay? We were looking around, and it was within 170 miles away from our current location. Okay, no problem. And it was going all the way to California, which is why I wanted to take it, okay? I was willing to haul that for, you know, slightly less than what I would normally haul it for, right? But the average lane on that was like a dollar seventy, a dollar sixty, or something like that, right? That's the average, uh, the thirty day average on it, and. That there's no way we were gonna haul it for that. And TQL had it posted for a dollar seventy-five, dollar seventy-nine, or something like that. So we called it in. Hey, there might be a possibility. Listen, there's a lot of people out there that would discount TQL. Trust me, 
I'm with you. 98, as a matter of fact, 99% of the time, yes, I definitely agree with you. But I also believe in every one of these, like every one of these brokers will have good days someday. You know, so TQL, I'm hoping that they, this was one of those loads, okay? So we called it in and they answered and they were like, okay, what are we talking about? You know, and they were like, okay, uh, do you have straps? Yes, I have straps. Okay, do you know how to secure these flatbed? These are three stacks of flatbed, okay? It's a four, uh, 53 foot flatbed, three stacks of them. All you gotta do is strap them down, okay? Maybe chain it, chain it in the front or whatever, okay? Anyway, uh, going to California and they're, they they posted it for like a dollar seventy or seventy nine or something like that, so I was like, okay, um, let's go two thirty. He was like, man, what? Where'd you come up with that? How'd you come up with that? I was like, well, that's what I normally average uh, uh, haul is two thirty, and then he was like, I'm paying above average on this lane. I was like, well, you're paying above average, but that that doesn't mean I'm going to make money off of it. It doesn't matter what that average is, you know? <laughs> then he was like, is your truck made out of gold? I said, not really, but it is silver plated. <laughs> and then he hung up. <laughs> Listen, if you're going to give me a sur sarcastic remark i'm gonna bring it right back at you that's only fair right anyway that's the end of the vlog man look look how messy the truck is i don't even have time to organize the doggone thing i got everything just in a limbo everywhere man just i need to organize this doggone truck because i I brought a lot of tools with me and just because i I'm, i wasn't certain you know what i mean i'm not sure too because you never know what's gonna happen out there right so anyway that's the end of this vlog quick vlog about power only i know i've labor a lot i don't even know how long this vlog is gonna be it's probably gonna be over 20 minutes but we will see y'all in the